I don't know about you, but I wouldn't technically consider war a sport. I mean, yes, there is offensive and defensive strategies. Spies can act as interference, and grenades can be ball-like objects when thrown, but overall, I wouldn't consider it a sport. But since early man to the Middle Ages to now, all these stories and everything that's come together, they all sort of relate, and they all have their superstitions. And going to school and... You've gone to Catholic school as well. I'm sure you've come across Exodus 17:12, where Moses, when he had his hands held up, the Israelites were winning the war, and when they were down, they would be losing. So he had Aaron and Hur come and keep his arms up so the Israelites would win. Now, that's some superstition. I want to talk about some of the things I've had for superstitions for sports and some professional players as well. So in baseball as a kid, I would adjust my batting stance and the pre-swing uh, before every pitch and one of the things in seventh grade my team lost nine straight baseball games and on that 10th game center field but John Fogarty was playing on in the car on the way to that game and sure enough we won that game so of course naturally I had to play center field before all my games and we won the next several games actually we ended up doing pretty well so that was one superstition I had this one wasn't really like too much it's I had a handful of goldfish before all my karate classes I just liked goldfish. Soccer. Now, soccer was probably the most superstitious I had. Uh, if I wasn't scoring goals in games, I would say I had the joeositis. And I had to score three goals in a row without missing at practice. And then it would be done, warded off, would go to some other player. And it, it, it worked numerous times. One of the other things, I was also always had to have a bowl of pasta before all my soccer games. And during half times, where the other kids were eating orange slices, I would have a Milky Way bar. When you're watching Jet Games for the NFL, I basically kicked my dad out of his own living room because when he was present during Jet Games, they would do bad. And when he'd leave, they'd do well. Uh, one of my favorite incidents is, is when he was leaving for my sister's soccer game. Like exactly when he stepped out, the Jets were playing the then undefeated Colts, sacked the quarterback, forced a fumble, recovered it, got a touchdown, and won the game. Now enough about me, let's hear about some professional sports athletes because clearly their stuff must work better than me because they're pros. First off, Michael Jordan would always wear his college basketball shorts underneath his actual professional Chicago Bulls basketball shorts during all the games, which actually led to longer shorts he was wearing, which was then a trend other players started doing as well. I know you're not super into hockey, but one of the greatest goalies, Patrick Roy, uh, he would actually talk to his goalposts and thank them after pucks would deflect off the post during the middle of the game. Now, I know you're a big baseball guy, but have you ever heard of Kevin Romberg? Didn't last very long. He was a bit of a crazy nut job. He wouldn't turn to his right ever. He would always have to go left to then get the ball. Uh, but he also had this thing, if someone touched him, he'd have to touch someone else back. So this would lead to game stoppages of him trying to chase down other players and touch them back after like getting tagged at second base. For me, when I think Jason Giambi and superstitions, I think of his mustache, but apparently he had a golden thong he'd wear to bust out of slumps. But what's even more weirder is that other players would ask to borrow that thong. Uh, I guess money can't buy you lucky butt floss. I know you did swimming, so did you have superstitions for that? Or did you also have any superstitions while you were playing in the band for the other teams for football and basketball? Did you have superstitions for that?